Hello kids, welcome to the last of the president work. This is presidents 36 through 40, all the way up to Ronald Reagan. And we're gonna do what we always do. Let's start off, here we go. Number one, George Washington. John Adams. Thomas Jefferson. James Madison. James Monroe, <clears throat> John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, William Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James Garfield, <coughs> Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, first time, Benjamin Harrison, Grover Cleveland, second time, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Harry Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and John F. Kennedy. All right, so there you have it. Today, our presidents are going to be taking us from the years 1963 to 1989. So about 16 years or so. Um, actually, is that the, the right math? No, 26 years. 26 years of presidents. I was born under Gerald Ford. That's one of the things that I <laughs> know most about this work is Gerald Ford wasn't president for that long. And uh, I was a Ford baby born in 1975. So. Let's get started with Lyndon Baines Johnson. All right, so let's talk about his background. Lyndon Johnson was born in a farmhouse in Texas. His dad had been a member in the Texas, Texas legislature, and he used his connections to establish himself in state politics. In 1937, he ran for Congress and was elected as a strong supporter of Roosevelt's New Deal programs. In 1948, he was elected to the Senate, and in the short space of five years, he became his party's minority leader there. As a politician, Johnson was a master manipulator. He would court powerful congressmen and use every method of flattery and intimidation to get what he wanted. This, is, this method was well known. It was called the treatment. LBJ. All right, so when he became president, let's talk about his domestic policy. In November of 1963, Kennedy was assassinated by a lone gunman, and Johnson, as vice president, became president. He inherited Kennedy's administration, and he saw it as his job to pursue the same policies. His ma massive reforms to alleviate poverty, to improve education, and expand civil rights were known as his great society programs. Johnson declared war on poverty. He created new welfare programs to help the disabled and the elderly, such as Medicare and Medicaid. He created the, the food stamp program, which provided four poor families with the means to buy food. In civil rights, Johnson got the Civil Rights Act of 1964 passed by a Democratic Congress. The, law, uh, the bill outlawed discrimination against ethnic and religious minorities and women in public places. In 1965, he got the Voting Rights Act passed, which outlawed any discriminatory acts that would prevent someone from voting. So this is actually one of the most famous things that happened during uh, Johnson's presidency, the Civil Rights Act, 1964. 
And of course, this is in the midst of the civil rights movement. There you see uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his work, very important. The 1960s in American history is a really interesting time period. I kind of wish I was alive to experience it, uh, but I wasn't. All right, so let's talk about uh, a foreign policy and the war in Vietnam. The war in Vietnam was started shortly after Johnson became president. The leader of the South, the South Vietnamese, was assassinated in a coup in 1963. Johnson had Congress pass the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution in August of 1964 after a supposed attack on an American ship. This resolution gave Johnson the power to wage war in Vietnam without war being formally declared. Initially, the war was fought with a heavy bombing campaign to break the morale of the North. The bombing was particularly brutal on the local, local population, as it was not clear what were civilian and military targets. The ground war began in 1965, when Marines were sent in to protect Air Force bases. By the end of the year, over 200,000 American soldiers would be in Vietnam. So this was American entry into the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War would prove to be largely unpopular uh, at home among many people. Um, why were we there? Questions about that. And the legacy of the Vietnam War uh, would continue into the 70s, 80s, and even today. So let's talk about LBJ. So president from 1963 to 1969, he was a Democrat. Vietnam was Johnson's stumbling block, not to say his downfall. In March 1965, when US destroyers were attacked by North Vietnamese soldiers, he ordered the bombing of military targets and sent soldiers beyond number into combat. Anti-war sentiment contained at first began, became wide-ranging. Uh, the divisions in society ran deep, and the White House was besieged by protesters of all colors and classes chanting, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? Inflation soared as the war raged on. Domestic problems were neglected as well. Riots erupted, scarring the inner cities and the nation's conscience. In 1968, with the albatross of Vietnam on his shoulder, Johnson made the stunning announcement that in the interest of peace both at home and abroad, he would not seek re-election. He retired to his ranch in the Texas Hill Country. So he did not seek re-election after uh, some of that involvement, well, involvement in Vietnam. So that is Lyndon Baines Johnson. Let's talk about the next president uh, who is infamous. This would be Richard Nixon, who was president from 1969 to 1974. His background. Richard Nixon started his career as a lawyer. He later got elected to Congress in California. He was the youngest member of a, the, what's called the Herder Committee. This was the committee that oversaw aid to Europe after the Second World War. They approved the Marshall Plan, which gave $13 billion to help Europe rebuild. In 1952, Nixon became Eisenhower's vice president. During this time, he famously participated in the kitchen debate. This is, was a debate with the leader of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, over the superiority, uh, superiority of the American system over Soviet communism. We cannot forget that we are in the midst of the Cold War. So all of the presidents during this time period are all in what is called the Cold War, which is an undeclared war of influence between the United States and the USSR. So this is the background of all of this is the Cold War. So let's talk about his domestic policy when he became president. When Nixon became president, there was high inflation. This meant that the cost of goods was increasing very rapidly. Nixon tried to stop this by fixing the price of goods so that they could not increase. On July 20th, 1969, the United States became the first country to ever land a man on the moon. This was a project that was started by President Kennedy. So we did land on the moon there. In 1974, Nixon had to resign as president due to the Watergate scandal. Nixon had authorized men to burglarize the offices of the Democratic National Committee's headquarters at the Watergate complex. So this was a very infamous moment in U.S. history with uh, this whole Watergate scandal. And uh, there's all sorts of stuff on this if you're interested in pursuing the Watergate scandal. A lot of conspiracy theories, etc. Yeah, Nixon had to resign. What's going on with his foreign policy, though? In 1972, Nixon opened up relations with China. China was a communist country. 
However, Nixon wanted to weaken the bond between the Soviet Union and China. He wanted to open trade with China. The war in Vietnam had become increasingly unpopular during Nixon's presidency. Nixon promised to end the war. He first tried to force a surrender by ordering a massive bombing campaign on Cam Cambodia, which was helping North Vietnam, but this did not work. In 1973, Nixon decided to end the war by making peace with North Vietnam. So I believe the war ends 1973, 1974. Uh, I'm born after the end of the Vietnam War. Uh, my dad got drafted into the Vietnam War, in fact. Uh, he got drafted, and fortunately he did not have to uh, go do any fighting or anything. He actually was, uh, I believe, he worked in logistics uh, at home. But uh, yeah, there was this moment where they were drafting or basically randomly selecting um, men to join the military to, to fight in the Vietnam War. And my dad was one of them. He got drafted. Uh, so I've heard some really interesting stories from him about his experiences in the military during that time. Let's see. Let's look at interesting things about Nixon. I think he's famous for a quote, you know, the, they've got to know if their president's a crook, and I am not a crook. Um, let me read a little bit more about the Watergate scandal. Nixon's world was soon to splinter into irretrievable pieces. The vice president, Spir uh, Spiro Agnew, resigned in October 1973 in response to charges of federal income tax evasion. House Minority Leader Gerald Ford would be chosen by Nixon to replace him. So Gerald Ford would become Nixon's president in 1973. There was a cover-up of burglaries at the Dem Democratic headquarters in Washington's Watergate complex, and they found out that this was led by Nixon himself. He had uh, the tapes. They recorded these on tapes back in the day. Um, his tapes betrayed him, and that would take him down. And impeachment was going to happen. He was going to be impeached, but he decided to resign on August 9th, 1974. So there you have it. Nixon resigned in August 9th, 1974. And that brings us to Gerald Ford. All right, so let's talk about Gerald Ford's background. Ford fought in World War II. After, he, after the war, he ran for Congress and won. He personally went to the homes of voters to win their support. He served on the Warren Commission. The commission was organized to find out who was responsible for the assassination of John F. Kennedy. They concluded that it was a lone gunman that was responsible. And again, the conspiracy theories around this is just way too many <laughs> to mention. In 1973, Ford became vice president after Sp uh, Spiro Agnew had to resign due to criminal charges of tax evasion. In 1974, Ford became president after Nixon resigned due to criminal charges. So he goes from House Minority Leader to boom to Vice President to boom to President within the span of about a year. One of Ford's first acts as president was to pardon Nixon from any uh, criminal prosecution. And if I remember correctly, this was incredibly unpopular uh, for him to do that at the time. Inflation was out of control. This was like cost of goods keep going up. So this is out of control. At this time, he proposed his uh, win or whip inflation now policy to deal with the matter. This asked Americans to decrease their spending as well as the government. Uh, over 9% of the workforce was unemployed under Ford. He tried to help people with the Tax Reduction Act of 1975. He was, however, against using federal money to help the bankrupt city of New York. So the mid-70s, when I was born, was kind of a bad time <laughs> for the economy. Uh, and uh, there's just uh, a lot of stories that my parents tell about, uh, and we'll get to it with the um, um, we talk with the Jimmy, Jimmy Carter years. But the 1970s was sort of a uh, the late the mid late 70s was sort of a rough time for the U.S. economy. So let's talk about Ford's foreign policy. He signed what was called the Salt Treaty in 1974. This was a treaty with the Soviet Union. The agreement was for both countries to improve their relations by reducing their military arms. So this was an attempt to ease up on the Cold War. And in the picture here, I believe that's um, the premier of the Soviet Union, uh, the new one, Leonid Brezhnev, I believe, signing this document next to Ford. After the U.S. made peace with North Vietnam, the North continued to invade the South. Ford supported sending aid to, Cong to South Vietnam, but Congress disagreed. In 1975, many Americans and South Vietnamese had to be airlifted out of the country as it fell to the North. So it looks like we still have some lingering Vietnam conflict 
That is Gerald Ford, and he was president from 1974 to 1977. Let's see if there's any interesting facts about Ford here. Yeah, it says he's the country's only president not to have been elected either to the presidency or to the vice presidency. And in fact, it says here that uh, Ronald Reagan would invite Ford to be his running mate, but he declined. Um, and this was uh, after Jimmy Carter was elected. So let's talk about Jimmy Carter. So Jimmy Carter would be, be president from 1977 to 1981. He ran for the governor of Georgia in 1970. He ran as a man of the people, and he presented himself as an honest and simple farmer that wanted the government to work for the people. Uh, when he became governor, Carter supported racial equality. He hired many African-American state employees. Carter ran for president in 1976, and nobody thought he had a chance to win. He had little experience, and he was not a public name. However, the country was sick of corruption in Washington. Remember, this is in the aftermath of the Watergate scandal. Carter presented himself as a simple man of the people who would restore a sense of decency to the White House. So Jimmy Carter presents himself as a man of the people. Carter had to deal with a major oil crisis during his presidency. This was partly due to the Arab oil producing states refusing to sell oil to the United States for his support of Israel during the Yom Kippur War. Cor Carter encouraged the public to use less gas and to consume less. He also had solar panels installed in the White House. Carter passed many laws to reduce government regulations on businesses. Carter passed the Airline Deregulation Act, which allowed airlines to set their own prices and routes. So yeah, this was, the, I believe, the OPEC oil crisis, and this was uh, something that my parents remember, where like you know, gas lines and gas prices, um, just really, really rough times there in the late 70s uh, with respect to the economy because of the virtual monopoly almost um, held by the um, oil-producing countries in the Middle East. So let's talk about Carter's foreign policy. Carter was responsible for having Egypt and Israel sign what were called the Camp David Accords. This was a treaty that called for peace between the two countries. Israel would return land it had taken in the Sinai in exchange for peace and safe passage of ships. The Iran hostage crisis had a devastating effect on Carter's presidency. Iran had overthrown its ruler, the Shah, who was in the U.S. getting medical treatment. Iranians wanted the Shah to be returned to Iran to face trial. Carter refused. In response, Americans staying in the embassy in Tehran were taken hostage. Carter refused to give in to their demands. However, his inability to negotiate the freedom of the hostages made him appear weak, and the hostages were released um, after Ronald Reagan became president. Next. So Jimmy Carter, and the interesting thing, Jimmy Carter is um, the oldest um, still living president right now. Jimmy Carter, I believe, is in his 90s. Um, yeah, he is still alive and doing good work. Um, Jimmy Carter returned to a life of, of service, and he's sort of kind of, uh, among many people in America, sort of this quiet folk hero guy who just continued to live by his principles. So he's uh, kind of a, an, an admirable character. Uh, he wasn't a really great president with respect to uh, how to get people you know, how to get the economy moving, but he, he has been well-respected as a person who continues, has continued to work for uh, the communities uh, in the United, for the people in the United States. So, yeah, Jimmy Carter. His vice president was Walter Mondale, and Mondale is interesting because Mondale would run, to, one for, run for president against, against Reagan in 1984 and fail. Yeah, it says here at the end, he has become the most productive of our living presidents, an indispensable elder statesman, consulted on foreign affairs by every chief executive who followed him. So, uh, yeah, um, Jimmy Carter is uh, well respected. Um, he's the, the oldest living former president. Very well respected. All right, so let's get to the president that I know, uh, that I was born under, that I actually first experienced. Um, I was too young to really understand anything in the 70s, but I did, I was age 5 to 15 in the 80s, 
during the Reagan presidency. And Ronald Reagan was president from 1981 to 1989. He started his career as an actor in Hollywood. As an actor, he was a very strong anti-communist. And during the 1950s, there was widespread fear of communism. Remember, this is the time of the Cold War. In the 1950s, you know, this is like we're establishing ourselves as the capitalist, capitalistic bastion of freedom. And the USSR is the evil empire, communism, the red state, all of that stuff. And Reagan was very anti-communist. Communists in Hollywood were put on a blacklist so they could not work. And Reagan helped in naming them. In 1967, Reagan became governor of California. He campaigned on a platform of restoring American values of hard work and moral decency. As governor, he often clashed with students involved in the protest movement on the campus of Berkeley. There were students there that saw the war in Vietnam as immoral and traditional American values as being oppressive. So, yeah, so he's governor of California after being an actor, and he's dealing with, as governor, dealing with people who find the war in Vietnam incredibly unpopular. And uh, this was a, a feature of the late 60s, early 70s, um, the protests against the Vietnam War. So what happened when Reagan be became president? Well, he is known for ushering, ushering in an era of economic reform known as Reaganomics. His policies are also referred to as trickle-down economics. Reagan believed that lowering taxes on the rich would cause them to invest more and create more jobs. Therefore, helping the rich would lead to helping the poor. Reagan believed in having a small government. However, he also wanted a strong military. Reagan lowered taxes, especially on the rich. He reduced federal spending on assisting local governments and on public housing. The economy recovered under Reagan after the slump of the 70s. However, there was a major stock market crash, I believe in 1989, and a savings and loan, or was it 87? One of the two. There was a, a stock market crash and a savings and loan crisis near the end of his second term. So that's Reagan domestic policy. Now, the end of the Cold War occurred during Reagan's presidency. The Cold War was a period after World War II where capitalist countries and communist countries vied for control or fought uh, for influence for control of the world. The Berlin Wall, which separated Berlin into communist and capitalist territories, was torn down. The Soviet Union started to collapse internally and break apart. Reagan is often credited with helping end the Cold War by building up the military, which forced the communists to do so as well. This led to civil unrest in their countries due to a weakened military. Yeah, so the, the premier of the Soviet Union this time was Mikhail Gorbachev. And so, you know, Reagan is famous for saying, Gorbachev, tear down this, tear down this wall, which is, I'm talking about the, the Berlin Wall, which is symbolic of the communist regime in uh, East Berlin, their presence there after uh, World War II. Reagan's administration got caught up in a scandal when it secretly sold weapons to Iran to get money to fund anti-communist militias in Nicaragua. The money was given to the Contras to fight the communist Sandinistas. This was a problem because Congress did not want to aid the ruthless Contras. This is, I believe, um, where Oliver North, um, this, this, uh, I believe he was a colonel at the time, was involved. Um, so basically, this is where the U.S. sort of gets caught doing what they had been doing, which is funding anybody who's going to fight against the communists. It might be a regime that you don't like, but you don't like the communists more, so the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And so that's sort of what's happened here with the Iran-Contra affair. So um, that happened, I believe, that was the mid to late 80s when all of that came down. I remember hearing about all of that on the news. So um, Ronald Reagan, as a president, a very uh, controversial in some ways. A lot of people don't like the fact that um, some of his economic policies, but it does remain the fact that the economy did recover um, in the 1980s. Uh, the 1980s was um, just a shift. Uh, in, it's just a, it was a different time from the 70s. Uh, I remember as a child growing up under the Reagan presidency, I did not know anything about politics or anything. I just kind of liked uh, Reagan because he just seemed to be a very nice guy on the television, but that's the perspective of a child like you don't uh, uh, At that time I really didn't think about politics and and the world wasn't in our face as much as it is today with media, so uh, I Kind of liked Ronald Reagan. I you know my opinion has sort of shifted a little bit as I've gotten older um, but uh, Ronald Reagan was uh, very popular in the country um, and you know he was a pretty popular president. His vice president, by the way, was George Bush, 
George Herbert Walker Bush, who, who would become the 41st president um, from 1989 to 1993. So, uh, you know, we're now we're getting into the presidents that we know, right? So number 41 was George Herbert Walker Bush, 1989 to 1993, followed by uh, Bill Clinton, who was president from 1993 to 2001. And the last one on my little chart here is uh, 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 George Bush, the uh, um, George Walker Bush, uh, who was the 43rd president. Uh, and so that's where this that's where this ends. But so we end here our story in 1989 with Ronald Reagan. Let me see if there's any more interesting things about him. His first lady was Nancy Reagan. He was born and raised in rural Illinois. He would appear in upward of 50 films as an actor. He lost the 1976 presidential nomination to Ford by a close margin, but went on to defeat President Carter in 1980 by a moderate margin. Reaganomics. He made history when his three summits with Mikhail Gorbachev resulted in a crucial nuclear arms treaty. Okay. A lot of people were um, implicated in the Iran-Contra affair, but Ronald Reagan, known as the Teflon president, emerged unscathed. Um, yeah, so there's Ronald Reagan, and there's a picture here of Ronald Reagan meeting with uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. That's Gorbachev and Reagan. So there you have it. Presidents 36 through 40, this will be the last of the president presentations. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed them and learned a little bit about U.S. history as well as the presidents along the way. Have a great day.